Hello everyone, I'm Jensen, your digital content producer. It is Monday, August 24th, and I'm about to get you all caught up on today's top headlines. So we're gonna look at a push to impeach Ohio's governor, Mike DeWine. Plus, we're gonna get a bit of a sneak peek at the RNC, which kicks off tonight. But before we do any of that, I actually wanna give you a better look at some of the latest coronavirus data. So as a reminder, some of these numbers could seem lower due to a lag in reporting from over the weekend. But regardless, all of these averages seem to keep getting lower and lower each week. So that is pretty encouraging. Today, there have been 849 new cases of coronavirus reported in the state, with a 21-day average coming in at 1,033. There have been, unfortunately, eight deaths reported in the last 24 hours, but that is well below the average of 21. Hospitalizations are at 59 compared to the 21-day average of 89, and ICU admissions also seem to be down with 10 new admissions and the average coming in at 15. So that is what we have from the Ohio Department of Health today. And Governor Mike DeWine's response to the coronavirus seems to have it upset at least one Republican lawmaker. State Representative John Becker from Claremont County, Ohio, announced today that he has drafted 10 articles of impeachment against DeWine. An article on the Ohio House of Representatives website claims the governor violated the Ohio and United States constitutions, as well as multiple sections of the Ohio Revised Code. Becker is accusing DeWine of meddling in the conduct of a presidential primary election and arbitrarily closing certain businesses while allowing others to remain open. The article also claims that DeWine's statewide mask mandate is making Ohio a hostile work environment and that extending the mandate to places of worship forces citizens to, quote, choose between worshiping their God and worshiping at the altar of unbridled government. Becker also claims that the governor doubled down when he expanded the mask mandate to school-aged children. The representative is asking his 98 House colleagues to join him in what he calls ending the madness. Now, the Ohio Constitution states that the Ohio House of Representatives has the sole power of impeachment. And a majority of lawmakers there would need to support the effort for DeWine to actually be impeached. Then, two-thirds of the Ohio Senate would have to vote to convict him. And you can read Becker's full statement on our website right now, WTOL.com. Now, the University of Toledo is dealing with its own issues relating to the virus. To catch you up to speed, interim president Gregory Postel sent a letter to students on Friday after learning there were large social gatherings and off-campus events taking place without anyone taking COVID-19 precautions. So this letter told all students who decided to attend those gatherings to quarantine for 14 days. And today we've learned that the university has already noted some cases of the virus on campus. Leaders with the Toledo Lucas County Health Department said there are now 45 confirmed cases at the university with 11 students self-reporting their positive results. Those self-reported cases would be out of state and the health department doesn't have their labs. Leaders with UT say they are still collecting data and are currently building a dashboard to share information related to cases that are connected to the university. And apparently those gatherings included a number of student athletes, which led athletics director Mike O'Brien to set out a message of his own, reminding athletes that they took a pledge to follow COVID-19 prevention measures. And he said student athletes that didn't comply with this, who violated those terms, would be held accountable. And to read the interim president's full letter, you can again go to our website, WTOL.com. And even though the district is starting off the year remotely, leaders with Toledo Public Schools say they are working to distribute grab-and-go meals to students. So this is to make sure kids still have access to meals since they won't be physically going to school right now. The food service will begin on September 8th and will continue while students are virtually learning due to COVID-19. To prepare distribution routes, the district needs families who wish to have meals delivered to fill out an online survey ASAP. And to find that link, you can head over to, you guessed it, WTOL.com. And police are now investigating after a man was found dead in the backyard of a West Toledo home on Sunday morning. The victim, Rudy Gonzalez, was found on the 1500 block of Eleanor Avenue around 2 a.m. Police say he was found suffering from at least one gunshot wound and was pronounced dead at the scene. And right now, there are no suspects in custody. And this marks Toledo's 38th homicide this year, with four months still left to go in 2020. The city saw 38 homicides in 2019, for the entire year and we've already hit that benchmark. Now, if you have any information on this most recent case, you are urged to call Crime Stopper at 419-255-1111.
And let's broaden our scope here and look at some national news. One of the president's most influential and longest serving advisors, Kellyanne Conway, announced yesterday that she would be leaving the White House at the end of the month. Conway was President Trump's campaign manager during the 2016 race, was actually the first woman to successfully steer a White House bid, and then she became a senior counselor to the president. In her resignation letter, Conway cited a need to spend time with her four children. Now, her husband, George, has actually become an outspoken critic of the president, even joining the Lincoln Project, which is an outside group of Republicans devoted to defeating Trump, although on Sunday he decided to take a leave of absence from his role within this group. And both of these announcements came just a day after their daughter, Claudia, Conway went on social media to say she is pushing for emancipation and that she is devastated beyond compare that her mother is speaking at the RNC. But Kelly Ann Conway is still set to speak Wednesday night at the Republican National Convention. And speaking of the RNC, that is kicking off tonight. The four-day event is themed Honoring the Great American Story, and it features a number of well-known Trump supporters, including members of the Trump family, but also those whom the GOP says are members of the silent majority of Americans who have been aided by Trump's policies. So day one today will highlight the land of promise, aiming to show how Trump helped renew the American dream. Featured speakers include South Carolina Senator Tim Scott, who will deliver the coveted closing speech of the televised prime time block. Former ambassador to the UN Nikki Haley, presidential son Donald Trump Jr., staunch congressional defenders, representatives Matt Gates of Florida and Jim Jordan of Ohio, and Republican National Committee Chairwoman Ronna McDaniel. Tanya Weinrice, a Montana coffee shop owner who received federal loans to pay her employees during the coronavirus, will also speak, as well as Andrew Pollack, whose daughter Meadow was among those killed in the 2018 shooting in Parkland, Florida. Check out the full list of speakers on our website right now. Plus, you can watch the first night of the RNC live on WTOL.com and on our Facebook page starting right at around 8.30 p.m. But that is all I have for you today. For more of your top headlines, you can watch us nightly at 5, 6, and 11 on Channel 11, of course. And you can watch me here. Just make sure you like the video and hit subscribe so you'll get a little alert to your phone when I hop on here. But... That is it. With that being said, I hope you get out there and have a very happy Monday.